All right. So, how's it going, guys? So we have a patient here with who complains about uh, sharp, uh, excruciating low back pain for the past three weeks. And uh, let's see, the pain is at its worst in the morning, and especially when you try to bend forward. So we're gonna take a closer look, see what's going on in this region over here. So we're doing instrumentation, and we're looking for is any abnormal difference in temperature. And if we identify any particular difference in temperature at a particular level, that gives us an idea. The problem is at that particular level, we gotta take a closer look at it. And we've got one right here that's very hot. What I'm seeing is, yeah, this is what normal is supposed to look like over here. Not no swelling over here, but we start to see a little band, a small little band. Looks like it's very chronic, been there for quite some time. Also my edema right at this location over here. And if we count it, five, fourth lumbar. So at the fourth lumbar level, we have some swelling over here. Going down a little bit more. Yes, we have some swelling over here on the fifth lumbar level. Okay. And how's that fell over there? Here's a little bit. Here's a little bit, got it. And what about number four? Right here. Nope. A little, no, bit. a little bit or none? A little bit, no. A little, a little bit. bit. So would you say this fifth one hurts more? Correct. Or less? More. How much more? A level of one to ten, probably three. And this one? Probably two, a little bit less than one. A little bit less, got it. And if we go down the sacrum, Quite a bit of swelling over this region over here. It's definitely trying to protect something. How's this fellow over here? That one that hurts. How would you rate that note? Probably like five. Got it. But with your x-rays, what I see here, there are two structural abnormalities. First one is this fifth lumbar over here. And because of this increased space we've got over here. But number two, what's more telling, is this second sacral segment over here. Now, originally, when we first come out of mommy, that bone is actually in five pieces. And as we get older, around our 30 years old or so, it eventually fuses into one bone. Unless you have some kind of trauma you experience along the way that does not allow it to fuse properly. Okay. This is what we're seeing right here. Mm -hmm. It's gapped open like this, like a V sign, right over here. It's supposed to be fused like what you see over here, these lines. But we don't see that over here. So this says that's gapped open, that's an issue. And when we checked on you, we found out, yeah, this one you rated, this was five out of 10. This was three out of 10. And this fellow is over here, it's a little bit less than that, right? Yes. So when we, when we also take a look at your MRI, this also tells us, here's another key component. This one over here, you actually have a disc herniation at that fourth lumbar disc. Now. Any surgeon would take a look at it, like at this fellow over here and says, oh, you know, this is a candidate for surgery. But we just checked it on you. And we examined and we found out this fourth lumbar disc is actually, even though it looks bad on the MRI, it's not really a problem. So in other words, even if they operate on this thing, it wouldn't have fixed your pain problem because it's not the right one at all. What we see here is this fifth lumbar disc. As we see on this one over here, it's more swollen and bigger than these other discs over here. So why is that one swollen? Because this is what we see over here. That's second sacral segment. You have a rudimentary disc right there. This one over here is swollen. And when we challenge it and we test it, yeah, it causes pain. That's what we need to fix on you. So it's gonna be a two part process on you. First, we have to stabilize your foundation. Okay. And when it's ready and stable enough, we will correct your fifth lumbar. After, after that, you'll start noticing this one will start calming down. And I would not be surprised if you take another MRI a couple months down the road, you'll see this disc herniation gets reabsorbed and disappears. Just like, I don't know if you've ever seen that movie, My Cousin, My Cousin Vinny, right? Yes. You remember that scene where you know, they, whereas they say, you know, you get stuck in the mud, you know, one wheel gets stuck, but the other one's moving a lot more. Yeah. That's what's going on with your case over here. So your sacrum and the fifth lumbar, they got stuck. They got stuck this way. 
whereas the rest of the bones up here, it went stuck in opposite directions. So the reason why that disc herniated on your fourth lumbar is because this one over here got stuck. And as a result, that fourth lumbar, this one over here, moved a lot more to compensate. So that disc, it couldn't handle all that movement. That's why, bam, it blew out. So, as I said before, if they operate on this one, you wouldn't have to fix your problem. When the real problem is down here. So that's why this one over here, that's the answer for you. Perfect. Okay, went up. Look around. So, fill us in. How's the low back? It's filled pain free. So, how's yeah. it now? Feels good. I don't feel. You don't feel what? I don't feel any pain. Did it go away? Yeah, it went away. Alright, so let me clue you on what, what happened there. Okay. So what we just corrected on you is this second sacral segment over here. This fellow over here, it went backwards on you. Okay. Now as you see over here, this segment is attached and is connected to your right and your left hip joints. Okay. So I don't advise running because this fellow is going to be walking like a seesaw. It's going to rock back and forth. We want to try to minimize that because this would be one of the most difficult things to heal up on you. And also in addition to, Try and, when you sit down, make sure you sit down correctly because these two over here are our sitting bones. So okay. if we sit correctly, the cushion does not touch the sacrum at all. However, if we slouch, what happens? It will move and cause this second sacral segment to knock backwards again. We don't want to do that. Okay. All right. Now, next component, try to minimize walking up, going up the stairs because again, it's connected to both SI joints. So as a result, it's gonna rock. One to two stories, I'm not too concerned about. It's when we start to get to three stories and more, it could be an issue. So if you live on a, a very high walk up, you may have to take a small little break when you get to the second floor. Okay. Next component, when you go home, ice this area 20 minutes, three times a day. You gotta get the swelling out of the way. Do not use heat. Okay. All right, that'll be make a big difference. It's like, Using heat on this area is like throwing gasoline on a fire. It's a very bad idea. Okay, it's on the ice. You got it. Okay. Let this thing heal up, and we'll do our next follow-up in approximately two weeks. Okay. All right, we're all set. Okay. Anything Thank else? You. No, for now. Okay. I'm good. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. We're good.